So you've heard that raising NAD levels may improve your health and wellness. Maybe you're taking nicotinamide riboside supplements or something similar to do it, but you're not quite sure if it's working or not. In this video, I wanna cut through the mouse studies, the rat studies, the test tube studies. I wanna show you the actual human clinical trials where they gave NAD booster supplements to people to give you an idea of whether it works or not. So. Let me just start off by showing you this study. Nicotinamide riboside is uniquely and orally bioavailable to both mice, big deal, and humans. That's good. So here we've got 12, 12 people in this study. They've get, they give these 12 guys uh, different amounts of nicotinamide riboside, often called true niogen. That's the, the supplement that a lot of this research has been done on. They give them 100 milligrams, uh, 300 milligrams, and 1,000 milligrams for a week, and they show that that ever increasing doses will in turn lead to greater levels of NAD and NAD metabolites in, in, in the body. And that's good. So in other words, 1,000 milligrams will raise NAD more than, say, 100 milligrams a day would. Um, and, and, and so that is pretty much what a lot of the studies show. A lot of the research shows in humans that uh, when you take this supplement, it will raise NAD levels, and that's a good thing. Okay, so moving right along. So we've got this investigation, which is kind of a, a, a wordy uh, study here. Nicotinamide riboside improves the aged human skeletal muscle NAD metabolome. That's all the metabolites uh, involved in this process and induces transcriptotomic and anti-inflammatory signatures. What the heck is going on here? Yes, yeah, say this title three times really fast. So again, it, it's a small study, 12 older guys, basically. They're between 70 and 80 years of age. They give them a thousand milligrams of nicotinamide riboside for three weeks or a placebo. So for three weeks, they took nicotinamide riboside. For three weeks, they took a placebo just to see what the differences were. And lo and behold, they find that the NR supplement does, in fact, increase uh, NAD metabolites. That makes sense. Most of the studies do team, seem to show this. And then they go on to say that also, in addition to this, the nicotinamide riboside NAD booster supplement also lowered levels of cytokines, which some of these things can be inflammatory. That's part of the immune system. And you don't want to have a lot of inappropriate inflammation because that can lead to various diseases down the road. So it, this study does appear to show that there's a reduction in cellular inflammation, inappropriate cellular inf inflammation with this supplement. And that's very interesting. And then we come to this study. Long-term nicotinamide riboside supplementation is well tolerated, that's good, and elevates NAD in healthy and middle-aged and older adults. So really interesting, they took younger and older people. So in this investigation, we've got 24 uh, men and women, they're between, and they're in the 30s, but 35 to 55 years of age. They give them 1,000 milligrams of nicotinamide riboside for six weeks. And as you can kind of get an idea from the study, this is kind of a positive study here. Um, so they, they find that the, the study, the, the, the supplement does actually increase the again, metabolites in these, uh, they're basically uh, white blood cells here by about 60% compared to that when they took a placebo. Okay, that's really interesting. So again, another study showing that when you take this supplement, it does in fact increase NAD levels. Good. They also showed, interesting enough for you people taking NMN supplements, that uh, the nicotinamide riboside also increased NMN. That's uh, nicotinamide mononucleotide. That's another uh, dietary supplement which some people may be taking to increase NAD levels. Again, it was not a statistically significant amount, but again, they showed about an increase of, of about 1.5 fold, 1.5 times increase with NMN. I'll leave that up to you whether you think that's worthy or not. So then we come to this study, which you can kind of get an idea. It's kind of a positive study. Nicotinamide riboside supplements alter body composition. What? Yeah. And skeletal muscle acetylcarnitine levels in healthy, overweight people. They're calling them obese. I call them overweight. I would point out here, none of these people had diabetes or pre-diabetes. I want to bring that up because some people may be taking uh, nicotinamide riboside supplements to help their diabetes. None of these people in this study had diabetes. So 
again, small investigation, 13 people, they're overweight, uh, they're men and women, they're given for six weeks, a thousand milligrams of nicotinamide riboside. 1,000 milligrams. I'm giving you the dosages here because in case you're taking supplements, I think you should be aware of what the actual research is using, okay? To give you an idea of maybe whether you're taking enough or not. So we got a lot of uh, results here. Number one, study did show that uh, the NAD metabolites in the muscle did increase with this supplement. Again, a lot of studies do tend to show this. Point number two, interestingly enough, improved sleeping metabolic rate. What is that? It's also known as basal metabolic rate, BMR, the minimum amount of energy to keep us alive. This uh, study appeared to show that taking uh, and nicotinamide riboside boosted uh, basal metabolic rate. Okay. Point number three, elevated acetylcarnitine levels. That's interesting. Acetylcarnitine is also available as a dietary supplement. I would point out that there's really not a, an explanation so far of why and why this acetylcarnitine level did increase the researchers could speculate but i think this is worthy of a further investigation Number four, there was a better, there was an improvement in body composition, I say. And when I say body composition, uh, the researchers pointed out that the fat-free mass increased. And by fat-free mass, I take that to be muscle. And the fat mass actually decreased. So they apparently builded muscle and lost fat. Um, okay, maybe. Uh, this is the first study that I've seen that in humans that appeared to show this. Although, point number five, no change in body weight. These people did not lose weight. But again, if you're building muscle and you're burning and you're losing fat, well then maybe not a big deal that you lost weight, right? Uh, point number six though, no improvement in mitochondria function. This is one of the things that nicotinamide riboside is supposed to do. It's supposed to help our mitochondria work better. Maybe even make more mitochondria. This one said not so much. Point number seven, no improvement in insulin sensitivity. Insulin is, the, is basically the hormone that lowers blood sugar, very, very important for diabetics and pre-diabetics. So in this investigation, there was no change in insulin sensitivity. The insulin did not work any better when people took this nicotinamide riboside supplement. Again, uh, they, none of these people did have diabetes, again, in this, in this investigation, which again, good for them. But again, that's something for diabetics to think about because I have heard from diabetics who told me they were taking this for their insulin levels. And point number eight, no changes in blood pressure, no changes in energy production, and contrary to the previous investigation, no changes in cellular inflammation. So we've got some conflicting reports here. One study says a reduction in inflammation, another one says, no, we didn't see it. Okay, so that's basically the, the summary of this investigation. Bit of a, uh, of a mixed bag. I would point out, however, that when you look at all these and you're saying, wow, it improved basal metabolic rate, body composition, et cetera, I would point out that all these positive changes that you're seeing are, in the words of the researchers, small but significant. And small but significant. In other words, we're not talking like, for instance, a miracle fat burner here or anything like that, or a miracle muscle builder. In terms of body composition changes, we're looking at about a one or 2% difference. Again, I'll leave that up to you, whether you think that one or 2% difference is a big deal or not, but small, but significant. So small changes, but clinically significant changes. They're not always gonna be the same thing. Again, I wanted you to be aware of that. Oh, one more thing about this study. In those people who did see body composition changes, it was mostly the women, mostly the women. Most of the men did not see body composition changes. These researchers regularly speculated that, is it possible that nicotinamide riboside alters body composition differently depending on what your gender is? I bring this up because if you are a college student watching me right now, this would be an excellent dissertation topic for you to do. Let's see if it affects body composition differently in women or men. Don't know the answer to that yet, but again, I wanted to bring this to your attention. Maybe it might help somebody out there. And then we come to this study, which is again, not a very positive study. It came out in 2020, nicotinamide riboside does not alter mitochondrial respiration content or morphology in skeletal muscle from ob overweight, obese, uh, insulin resistant men. In other words, these guys were not only overweight, 
they had pre-diabetes as well. Pre-diabetes, uh, also known as metabolic syndrome, it's a precursor to type 2 diabetes. So a little bit larger investigation here, 40 people are given 2,000 milligrams of nicotinamide riboside uh, for 12 weeks or a placebo. So they're giving them in this study more NR, more nicotinamide riboside than in the other investigation. Okay, so twice as much. And here's what they find. Nicotinamide riboside did not improve muscle mitochondria function. Again, remember, that's something that this supplement is supposed to do. It's supposed to improve the mitochondria and how well it works. Not in this study, it didn't. It did not raise mitochondria NAD levels either. Didn't do it. Also did not increase the number of the mitochondria as well. Some mouse studies have suggested that nicotinamide riboside would in fact increase the number of the mitochondria. This study said no, it didn't. Also, did not reduce fat inside the muscle fibers. Again, that's kind of contrary to the last study, which seemed to show some sort of a fat burning effect going on. In this study, point number four, did not reduce fat inside the muscle fibers. Point number five, again, no change in insulin sensitivity. This study is corroborating the previous investigation, which also showed no change in insulin function with nicotinamide riboside supplements. Again, I point out the people in this study had prediabetes. Interesting, another point I would point out to you is that there was no alteration in the activity of sirtuins inside the muscle either. Sirtuins are protein-based enzymes, which, well, they do a lot of things, but they're also implicated in the aging process. And that's something else that nicotinamide riboside is rumored to help, maybe slowing down the aging process. Well, there was no change in sirtuin activity in this study, which kind of makes sense because, again, there was no increase in NAD levels inside the mitochondria. NAD and sirtuins, they kind of go together very uh, a lot. The sirtuins actually need NAD to work properly. So if there was no change in NAD, it makes sense that sirtuin activity would not be different. But point number seven, NAMPT, that's an enzyme. That's an enzyme that's very important for production of NAD levels, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD. Well, turns out in this study, that key enzyme, that NAMPT enzyme actually decreased in this study by 14%. Not quite sure what to make of that. But again, you see this study that uh, is raising some interesting questions. Again, really, really good, uh, maybe some topics for some college students maybe want to do a dissertation on in the future. Now, if you're kind of dissuaded by, by that last uh, study I just showed you, I would point out there is another way to raise your cellular NAD levels. Does not require you to take a pill. Here it is, exercise. Yeah, here's a study that comes out in 2019 aerobic and strength training exercises reverses the age-dependent decline in NAD in human skeletal muscle. So in other words, in this investigation, it's a three-month-long study. It's 12 weeks long. They, they take basically younger people and older people, 35 and fi over 55 years of age. They put them on a strength training and an aerobic exercise program, and they show, check this out, that NAMPT enzyme that's important for NAD, it increases increases between 12% and 28% in both the younger and older people. In other words, NAMPT increased more in the older people with aerobic exercise than it did in the younger people. And in terms of strength training, resistance exercise, it also increased NAMPT enzyme, again, about the same, 25 and 30% in both younger and older people, respectively. Oh, and, and for the exercise people who are watching me right now, if you're curious, what did they actually do? Here's a breakdown of their exercise program. The aerobic program had them exercising at between 70 and 75% of their maximum aerobic ability, uh, 180 minutes a week, which isn't kind of in line with the US guidelines, uh, three to four days a week. And I went ahead and did the math for you. If you worked out four days a week, that's 45 minutes a day. If you worked out three days a week, that's 60 minutes a day. And they basically had their choice of treadmill, bike, and elliptical. As for the strength training program, pretty darn basic program. It was an alternating upper and lower and body exercise program. So one exercise, they did maybe a bench press. Another exercise, they did a leg press. Then they did a shoulder press. Something like that. Upper body, lower body. Upper body, lower body. 
45 minutes a day, three days a week. Again, not, not really out of, uh, out of line with uh, what is usually recommended for people. And that was shown to increase that NAMPT enzyme uh, significantly in these younger and older people. So what's all this mean? So uh, again, I got a couple few takeaways for you just to give you some things to think about. Number one, most research so far uh, has been conducted on mice, rats, and essentially isolated cells in a test tube. I call them test tube uh, studies. I want to do this video to kick the researchers in the butt. It is time to stop doing mouse studies, rat studies, test tube studies. This topic deserves more human research. If you're taking NR supplements right now or NMN supplements right now, you deserve more human research. And again, that's something that I think we definitely need. What I've showed you here is the human research I was able to find when I did this video. In the future, there will be more of these human studies, but this is what I could find right now. Studies across the board pretty much show that nicotinamide riboside will raise NAD levels in human beings. I have no doubt that it's going to do that. Again, that's, that's pretty much established, at least in my mind it is. But what does this mean? Is it all rosy and great, or could there be some downsides to this? In other words, could you raise NAD levels too much? And if so, what does that mean down the road? I don't know the answer to this yet. There are some researchers that are starting to wonder about this and bring up questions, but there's really nothing out there firm. Uh, and again, I would point out no human studies are showing any side effects, any negative side effects or adverse effects at all. So uh, at this point of the game, I'm, I'm inclined to think that pretty much nicotinamide riboside supplements are safe in humans. And, they, and research does appear to show this, but again, could you raise them too much? I don't know the answer to that yet. This again will be worthy of further investigation and discussion. Insulin sensitivity. For the diabetics out there taking this, I do believe we need more research on this. I just showed you two human studies that appear to show nicotinamide riboside supplements do not improve insulin sensitivity. Forget the mouse studies. We are not mice, we're humans. We deserve more human research on this topic. So if you're a diabetic or a pre-diabetic and you're taking this, I would say this is probably not going to be a panacea for your insulin levels, but uh, again, it's no substitute for exercise and watching your weight uh, and watching uh, what, what you eat as well. So more, more research in terms of diabetes and nicotinamide riboside. And then lastly, exercise versus nicotinamide riboside. I showed you one study that appeared to show that uh, exercise raises NAD. Well, what's better? Is nicotinamide riboside better than exercise or vice versa? Or... Are they the same? Why isn't anybody doing that kind of research? I don't know. So again, for the college students who are watching me right now, this is an excellent topic, another excellent topic for a dissertation, and it would be a pretty easy study to do. So go ask your thesis advisor about that. So if you got any comments or questions, leave them below. I definitely hope this helped clear things up. I know maybe I gave you a few questions that maybe you didn't have before this. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And I'll see if I can help you myself. Until next time, I'm Joe Cannon. Go out, be safe, and I'll talk to you next time.